Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn, and as always, welcome to our show. So guys, no Pat again this weekend, but uh, it's not all bad news. He actually got engaged this past weekend. So uh, definitely leave a like and comment below uh, congratulating him on his engagement. So, uh, you know, always exciting. He's actually over in England right now. So, um, yeah, unfortunately couldn't be on here today, but uh, we got a lot to talk about. You know, it was unfortunately not the, the most inspiring weekend from some of our Americans abroad, but we did have some good performances from a few of our uh, young Yaz. And uh, some highlights too, especially one in particular. So definitely stick around for that. And uh, you know, more importantly, we had a player this weekend uh, face off against a Premier League powerhouse. And unfortunately, his team didn't play so well, but we think he he did. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we also want to give you guys two injury updates on some of our key USMNT players. So stick around for that. And uh, finally, we want to finish it up with, um, you know. We want to discuss a performance of one of our Yaz this weekend who did really well in the championship. So all that and more in this episode. So the first player we want to talk about today is Christian Pulisic. And Christian Pulisic got the crucial start for Chelsea in their, in their big game against Man City. Uh, you know, going into the weekend, Chelsea were in third, Man City were in fourth. So this was really kind of a, a big game in terms of, uh, you know, how the top of the table looks and uh, you have Lester there right now, who's kind of sticking around and making things interesting too. But uh, yeah, so this was a big game. Uh, it was important that Christian got the start, uh, especially with that injury that kept him out of the international break, that hip injury. So uh, yeah, it was really encouraging to see him uh, start this game and uh, you know get that trust from Frank Lampard right away after coming back from that injury. And uh, you know, I think right off the right off the bat in this game, Chelsea looked. Uh, very lively. I thought they really took it to Man City in the first, you know, 20, 30 minutes of the game. Um, it seems like this year, Chelsea seem really good coming out of the gates and, and start games really well. Uh, but for some reason, it always seems like it turns. So in this game, uh, you know, Chelsea got the early goal off of, uh, you know, a nice pretty much play from N'Golo Conte. Great shot. Um, great kind of run forward to, and, and it, he was able to get the ball out of his feet very quickly past the goalkeeper. Um, great highlight. Check it out. And uh, he had a nice little celebration with Pulisic too after it. Uh, so yeah, Chelsea got out to the early lead, one nothing. Uh, really dominated the game, like I said, for the first maybe 20 to 30 minutes, uh, at least 20 minutes, I would say. And then, uh, you know, after they scored, it seemed like uh, Man City just kind of capitalized on um, – you know, some of the, the opportunities Chelsea gave them, um, you know, Kevin De Bruyne had a really nice shot to get him uh, back 1-1, uh, I believe. And then uh, shortly after, uh, Man City went up 2-1 and uh, looked like they were in complete control of the game uh, pretty much uh, right after Chelsea were in complete control of the game. So it was, uh, yeah, it was it was kind of interesting in that, in that sense. Um, you know, I think in this game specifically, I thought Christian Pulisic, did you know as well as he could have? Uh, I thought he started the game really well. Like Chelsea, when they they had the ball in possession, uh, you know he looked very good, very comfortable on the ball, very dynamic. Um, and then once Chelsea kind of lost control of the game, um, it, you know it was tough to get Christian the ball and get him as involved as uh, you know he'd like to be. So uh, could he have done more? Maybe, uh, but I thought he did. You know I thought he provided. Uh, a, a threat the whole game um, on the wing and, uh, you know, still looked bright and confident and all that good stuff that we've seen from him recently. It just, you know, wasn't his day to, uh, to score, or, um, you know, help Chelsea out in that department, um, which is, you know, unfortunate always, but uh, yeah, I, I, it was weird. I thought Chelsea, they had some chances in the second half, but it just seemed like once they went down, uh, they kind of just got lost on themselves and um, lost a little bit of that confidence. And uh, yeah, it was, it was disappointing, but like I said, I thought Christian played well. Um, I thought it was really important first off that he got the start in this game. Um, you know, Mason Mount came on later in this game, another player that 
you know, fr from our standpoint, I saw some stuff on Twitter. From our standpoint, it's, you know, I don't, I don't really care. Mason Mount, Christian Pulisic, um, I think both are very good quality players. I think both deserve playing time. But it seems like uh, Frank Lampard kind of had them uh, battling it out for uh, minutes, essentially. So uh, it's always interesting to kind of compare their performances. And, you know, Mason Mount came on in this game, did some good things, just like Christian Pulisic did, I'd say, in the first half. And he did a few good things in the second half as well. But uh, he wasn't really able to make, you know, a huge impact. Uh, Mishi Batshuayi, I believe, came on too. Wasn't really able to change uh, Chelsea's fortunes too much. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know, I think, again, it was really good to see him start. I thought, uh, you know, he provided them with a lot, a lot of dynamic ability down the wings during the game. Um, and, you know, I don't think Chelsea's loss was attributed to him being on the field and, and things that he did directly, uh, you know, resulting in their goals or things he didn't do directly resulting in them getting the loss for the day. Um, I think it was more due to uh, kind of Chelsea's, you know, real feeble and um, I guess shambolic uh, defense. I think they really need to uh, look at, you know, either buying a center back in the winter window or, or doing something like that, uh, their defense right now. And obviously, Fakayo Tomori is still a young player and, and growing. Um, I thought their defense in this game kind of kind of let them down a little bit. So, yeah, you know, it was good to see Christian on the pitch. And, uh, yeah, I, th I still think he's in good form. I still think he's confident in his game. And that's kind of all we need from Christian right now. Um, you know, Chelsea after the game now sitting fourth uh, directly behind Man City. They're a good 12 points off of uh, first place Liverpool. So it doesn't look like they're going to win a championship this year. But uh, they do sit, you know, in that final Champions League spot. So, um, you know, a lot of games left to play, especially in December here. But I think Chelsea are in a good spot. And, uh, yeah, I think. Christian didn't do anything to really hurt his standing with Frank Lampard at this moment. So um, at this point, they didn't get the win, but I do think, uh, you know, he'll be, he'll definitely play a role in their Champions League game coming up, whether that's coming off the bench because he did play all 90 minutes. Um, you know, we'll see. They play West Ham next weekend as well. So um, I definitely think you'll see him start one of those two games. Um, and yeah, if you can start all two, that's great. But, uh, you know, coming back from injury, I could see where Frank kind of, uh, you know, takes it a little lighter with him and his workload this week. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, all we have for Christian this week. No uh, hat tricks or, you know, just goals in general to report on, which uh, that was fun the last few weeks. But, uh, yeah, so now we want to go over to, uh, I guess, a few injury updates and uh, let you guys know about a few players here. So the first one is Tyler Adams. So, Tyler, if you haven't, you know, been monitoring his situation. Basically, he's been out all summer and all fall with a nagging uh, groin slash hip injury. Um, so, yeah, it's been, you know, kind of a disastrous past like four or five months for him. Um, you know, it seemed like he was going to be back uh, for the start of the season. That's kind of what we heard over the summer. Um, it wasn't the case. It seems like his dates kept getting pushed back further and further. Um, and there was, I guess, a tweet that got, I guess, mis, um, mistranslated a few weeks ago that, that kind of said some of the, you know, similar things in the sense that he was going to be out for even longer uh, and he was going to have to get referred to a different specialist and the injury that he has was bigger than they thought and he can't get fit. But uh, it sounds like uh, another tweet and another article from a more reliable source, um, I believe a, a newspaper in Leipzig. So, you know, someone who should be close to the story and, um, you know, have some facts to play with. Um, and that, that story basically said that he was going to return to training sometime this week, uh, whether that's individ individual training or team training, I'm not exactly sure. But um, it also said in that article that Julian Nagelsmann, which is, you know, Leipzig's manager, said that he would be uh, back available for selection very soon. So, um, you know, you don't want to rush him back too, too quickly, at least, you know, in terms of just getting him playing time. You definitely want to take your time with him, get him acclimated in training, get him up to speed, and then, um, yeah, you know, get him on the pitch. Uh, so I don't think we'll expect to see him until maybe the second week of December. Um, you know, if he's back sooner, that's great. Uh, we just don't want him having, you know, another setback or, you know, long-term injury that's going to keep him out 
uh, for extended period of time in, in 2020. So, uh, yeah, you know, I think he's coming back at a great time for Leipzig. I believe right now they sit in second in the Bundesliga table. Um, so they've done, you know, a good job this year. It seems like the Bundesliga is uh, very competitive with Bayern, you know, not up to their standards, it seems like, to start the season. Dortmund struggling too. Um, and right now Gladbach's top of the table. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely in a good spot. Um, and the other thing too is they really need someone – at that center defensive mid position. That's kind of been a revolving door for them this year. Um, if you've seen any of their games, it seems like a lot of the options they have are more offensive minded players. Um, you know, like Emil Forsberg, uh, uh, Amadou Haidara is more of an offensive minded center mid. Uh, you also have Conrad Lamer who likes to get forward and um, isn't really strong defensively. Uh, Kevin Campbell who actually just got injured and had surgery. Uh, this past weekend, he was a player that they were kind of trying out in that more uh, defensive role. And he's, like I said, now injured and will be out for uh, a good period of time. So I definitely think Tyler is a welcome addition back to the team, um, more than just, you know, a quality player coming in. He's kind of a quality player that really fits a need for them right now. So um, if he can, you know, come back, stay healthy um, and, you know, prove prove his quality again, get reacclimated in training, I think. Uh, you know, Julian Nagelsmann's not afraid to make bold decisions. And I don't think uh, it'd be too surprising to see him kind of thrown right back into that starting lineup rather quickly. Uh, you know, again, the biggest thing is he just has to stay healthy for a period of time. Um, you know, these types of groin injuries can are, are the types of the injuries that can linger for, you know, your whole career, um, similar to like hamstring injuries. So uh, as long as it's, you know, 100% fixed and something that, isn't going to be uh, you know, a game to game type thing. Um, I guess that's the most important thing. So, you know, we hope to see Tyler back on the field very soon. Um, you know, and I think, I think that'll happen from all the things we've heard, you know, this article that we, that we read and, and heard more from um, seems to be a lot more accurate than, than the other one uh, we heard before. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we see Tyler back very soon. And uh, moving over to another player who is, injured right now and hopefully will be returning soon that would be tim wea so tim uh kind of similar to tyler has been out for uh several months now he did play a few games this year with lil uh, i believe he played in their first two games and then uh in that second game he was injured and um now has missed a lot of time here this season but uh you know tim i believe was on the way back uh i believe he, he started individual training with lil and uh then had a major well, maybe not major, but a, a setback uh, with his injury. And now we'll be out till after the holiday break or the winter break. So, um, yeah, don't expect to see Tim Wea back in 2019. Um, it sounds like we're going to have to wait till 2020 and probably like mid-January to see him back on the pitch. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely disappointing there. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the injury was. I really should have looked that up before we started filming, but I believe it was – something to do with either a groin or, or a leg issue, um, if I'm not mistaken. So um, kind of a similar, you know, issue like Tyler has had, uh, just one of those injuries that seems like, um, you know, rest and, and just staying off of your feet and staying off of, um, you know, moving those muscles really does well for it. Um, and it's just tough to do, uh, you know, when you got to get around and um, you're eager to get back on the pitch. So, um, yeah, let's hope – you know, Tim can, you know, rehabilitate, rest up over the, the winter break here. And, um, yeah, just not have another setback, really. Um, and then once he's back on the pitch, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully can help Lil and, um, you know, make up for kind of lost time here uh, to start this year. Uh, so it's important to say that right now Lil sit in 10th in Lagoon. So last year they finished in second. So um, they're definitely having some more trouble this year, some more issues. Um, they lost a lot of players over the summer. Uh, Nicholas Pepe was obviously the most important player they lost to Arsenal. Um, so they could definitely use the the help that Tim could give them um, if, when he gets back on the pitch. So uh, yeah, uh, let's you know let's hope that uh, rehabilitation goes smooth again this time for for Tim, unlike last time. And um, yeah, we get to see him back in 2020, and hopefully he can play a big role for that uh, you know Olympic qualification team. Um, 
you know, I feel like he would be a player that at this point in his career is still kind of not, you know, you know, we'll see where he uh, lands with Lil when he gets back on the pitch. But right now it doesn't seem like he's truly uh, established at, at Lil and uh, I think would be a great addition if healthy to that, um, you know, U23 team. And I think could, could really do a good job uh, offensively providing us with, um, you know, another quality winger, uh, quality attacker, which is something that we're kind of lacking at that level. So, um, yeah, here's to, uh, you know, Tim getting back on the pitch. And uh, now we want to move over to a player who played really well in the Champions, or excuse me, not the Champions League, but the Championship this weekend, and that would be Dwayne Holmes. So Dwayne started and played all 90 minutes in a 1-0 win over third place Preston North End um, and looked really well in looked really good, played really well in this game. Um, actually got a rating on foot mob, which is a great app of uh 7.7. So yeah, just did a great job. Um, I believe, you know, a Twitter account, Waki, uh, definitely someone you want to give a follow to did a heck of a job this weekend, uh, posting, I believe it was like five or six compilations of, of certain players. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely someone that you should definitely, uh, give a follow to. And uh, yeah, in this compilation, it just showed kind of the tenacity that Dwayne brings to the field. Um, he did a really good job of winning the ball back and then also getting forward after winning the ball back um, in this game. And, you know, it's something that looks like what Greg Berhalter wants his number eights to do for the USMNT. Um, you know, it seems like Greg wants them to kind of play as like box to box midfielders and, um, you know, affect the game and you know, when those midfielders press and then also be kind of the creators um, when the team has the ball in possession. And, you know, it seemed like Dwayne did a good amount of uh, that defensive work in this game. You know, the, the offensive ability and, um, you know, some of the things he did offensively, you know, he can work on a little bit better. And uh, I did like some of the weight he had on his through balls and, you know, just some of the, the, the passes he tried to pick out, I think were good ideas. But what really impressed me in this game was just, um, his ability to win the ball back, it was, it was really impressive. Uh, and it really kind of showed, um, I, you know, I think personally what good form he's in right now. Um, I, I really think he's one of Darby's best players, which, you know, going into last year, he was kind of a, a fringe player that was just, you know, signed to, to kind of see, you know, what he could do, what he could provide the team, um, and just a limited capacity. And, uh, you know, by the end of last year, Frank Lampard, pretty much had him in his starting 11 every game. And uh, it really seems like this year he's kind of taking that next step, which he really need, needed to do this season. And that's becoming a consistent, uh, you know, playmaker for Derby and, uh, you know, a player that they can really rely on, a player that is kind of, uh, you know, the center fold of their team, the, the focus of their team. Um, in this game, you know, he really he really did a great job, uh, you know, not only winning the ball, that was, that was obviously key and crucial, and uh, was really impressive. But he, once he won the ball, he basically, you know, turned on a dime, got his head up, looked to play a pass and, and ignite the counter, which, you know, uh, that's that next level type of, of play, that next level focus that we want to see from players. Um, you know, we, we like obviously when players make good defensive plays, but to really be um, a player that can, uh, you know, be a playmaker, be a player that stands out is when they kind of take that, uh, you know, make that next decision right after making a good decision. And um, that's what, you know, Dwayne did multiple times in this game. And uh, yeah, it's, it's got us excited here. So, um, you know, we hope to see Dwayne a lot in 2020 for the USMNT. Um, like I said, I think he's playing really confidently right now. Um, I think that was very evident in this, in this highlight uh, reel. And I think, um, yeah, he's in good form. Uh, so I, you know, again, not really sure why it wasn't a part of, um, these last two camps in October and November, but, you know, Greg Berhalter has his guys and, um, I guess we're going to live and die by that, but definitely hope that, uh, you know, he's, he takes another chance on, on Dwayne because the way Dwayne's playing right now, he's, he's a player that needs to be involved in the, the USMNT. Um, and I think he would fit perfectly in that number eight position. Um, you could maybe pair him in w with Weston McKinney, move Christian Pulisic outside, um, you know, I think Christian Plissick is good anywhere he plays on the USMNT. Um, but I think Dwayne adds something that um, at least adds something defensively in that number eight position 
um, or like the the two tens, whatever you want to call them. I call them two eights because they got to do more than 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 create. But um, you know, I think he adds more defensively than Christian would in that position, and uh, that's what really excites me and and makes me think that he would be you know a good addition to the squad. So yeah, I uh, yeah definitely keep your eye on Dwayne. Um, you know, we'll get a lot more minutes here uh, for Derby as you know the games ramp up right around uh, um, you know December here, end of December. So. Yeah, now uh, moving over to the Netherlands for our final player today, and that would be Serginho Dest. So Serginho almost got his first goal this weekend, but uh, was kind of robbed. So I guess we should start in saying that he was subbed on in the 67th minute for Ajax in their uh, 4-1 win this weekend over Heracles. And uh, yeah, he was subbed on. The game was up, or you know, the game was 3-0. Ajax was up. And uh, I believe it was in the 87th minute, uh, the ball kind of fell to Serginho um, right at the top of the box. And he took a really nice shot uh, that went in the goal. Uh, but on the way there, it was uh, deflected slightly by Klaus Jan Huntlear, the former Real Madrid and Schalke striker. So uh, he ended up claiming, you know, the goal and, it, you know, he did touch the ball a little bit, but uh, it was basically, you know, the shot was basically going to go in whether he touched it or not. So. Um, yeah, a little bit of bad luck from Serginho there, but he did get an assist on that shot and, uh, you know, hopeful goal. But, uh, yeah, so that makes, you know, now four assists this year for Serginho. Um, you know, he hasn't gotten as much playing time recently ever since uh, uh, Maserawi, their their first choice right back, has come back from injury. And, um, you know, they've gotten a few other of their defenders back. So, it is kind of what it is, you know, Serginho is still 18 right now. And um, yeah, he's gotten a lot of minutes to start the year. So uh, not a big deal that he's, you know, kind of the second choice right back right now. He's getting a lot of minutes off the bench, which is, you know, kind of impressive for a player playing in that right back position. You don't really see too many right back subs being kind of the first sub off the bench. So um, definitely uh, encouraging there. Um, and it kind of shows that Ajax still are prioritizing his development. They're still, um, you know, having faith in him getting on the field and, and um, you know, being a playmaker for them and a player that they want to integrate for the future. Because um, we all know, you know, Ajax is a selling club and um, players will, will probably leave, you know, maybe in the winter window, but, but most likely in the summer window too. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, his progression has kind of gone to plan so far. Um, obviously he picked the U S so, you know, we're always excited to see him on the pitch now. And, um, yeah, I, you know, we, he didn't, we didn't really get to see too much of him this game. Uh, you know, he's only subbed on for the final, uh, 23 minutes. So, uh, there was, I guess, a little blip at the end where he kind of was at fault for, uh, Heracles's goal on the day. So, um, you know, he got the assist for the, the fourth goal for Ajax, but then kind of was at fault for giving up that last one. So, you know, something to, to work on for the future. But, uh, yeah, uh, another uh, good performance from Serginho and um, more minutes, which is what we need, more uh, minutes to develop. So, yeah, that's it for this part of our episode. Now let's head over to Quick Kicks. And now it's time for Pat's favorite part of the show, and that would be Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's out to the over the wall. So to start quick kicks today, we want to talk about Weston McKinney. So Weston was subbed on and played the final 17 minutes uh, for Schalke in their 2-1 win over Bremen. So uh, unfortunately, he didn't start this game. I don't think it's something to really be concerned about. Uh, he basically came back late from uh, USMNT camp, uh, was only able to train for a day. So it looked like Schalke kind of just pulled him off the bench for this game and uh, you know was able to help them get the win. So um Again, nothing to really be worried about. I think he'll start their next game. Now moving over to Denmark to talk about the Hobros, and that would be Emmanuel Sabi and also Christian Kappas. So, you know, both started and played 90 minutes in this game, but we definitely have to talk about Emmanuel Sabi. So first he uh, drew the penalty for Hobro that uh, gifted them their goal. Um, they ended up losing 2-1 in this game, but he also pulled off a really nice uh, – rainbow flick over a defender. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, nice bit of skill and, uh, 
you know, something that we always like to see from our players, some, uh, some flair and finesse. So, uh, yeah, now moving over to Germany, we're going to talk about Chris Richards. So Chris, Chris actually started and played 90 minutes at right back in uh, Bayern 2's 1-1 draw with 1860 Munich. Um, and this was kind of a really cool game. So um, I guess 1860 Munich and Bayern Munich are kind of rivals just because they both play in the same city of Munich. Um, so they kind of hyped this game up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it was a really cool atmosphere. Um, and it looked like, uh, you know, a really cool game to be a part of. So, uh, yeah, another cool experience for Chris Richards. And uh, moving over to the Netherlands, uh, Richie Ledesma started and played 65 minutes in uh, Young PSV's 4-1 loss to De Graaf Schaap, uh on Friday. So, um, you know, good to see him on the pitch, but uh, not great to see him get that 4-1 loss. Um, and then he followed that up on Monday with, uh, you know, a start in 86 minutes for Young PSV. Um, and that was unfortunately in another 3-1 loss. So uh, Young PSV are kind of having a rough season. Um, I believe they sit pretty far down in the Erste de Vici table. Um, so, you know, Richie seems to be playing well and um, drawing good reviews, but uh, it doesn't seem like Young PSV is doing particularly well. So hopefully we can see, you know, that uh, progress a little bit, um, then play a little bit better. And, uh, you know, ho hopefully we see Richie Ledesma back on the bench for uh, – PSV in the Air de Vici. That would be that would be great. And uh, you know, staying in the Ursa de Vici, we want to talk about uh, Alex Mendez, who uh, played on Monday and he started and played 46 minutes in Young Ajax's uh, one-one draw. So uh, yeah, it seems like he's been starting a lot of games. Um, same type of thing in this game. He started and was subbed off uh, right at the start of the second half. So um, you know, we weren't able to really see any footage of this game. So I'm not sure. It, exactly what that was, if that's just kind of how they're they're playing things. Because it seems like he's been uh, doing that a lot this year. I don't know if that's, you know, a tactic that Young Ajax is using. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. You know, he's in a good spot, and hopefully uh, he continues to progress. And uh, going over to Germany, I want to let you guys know that Julian Green, unfortunately, will be sidelined with an injury for the next few weeks. So, uh, you know, he was off to a really good start in the Bundesliga 2. Uh, Greuther Firth or um, towards the top of that table there, I don't think they're in a promotion spot right at the moment. Um, but definitely, you know, it's been a catalyst in their in their good play this year. So disappointing to see. And hopefully, you know, Julian, you get back on the pitch soon. And uh, going over to Spain, I want to let you guys know that Shaq Moore started yet again and played 90 minutes. Uh, and that was in a 2-0 win for Tenerife. So Shaq finally getting back on the pitch. Um, and it looks like he's impressing. And kind of, I would say right now, I think he started – last three games for Tenerife. So I think he's, you know, starting to win over the, uh, the manager and, and, you know, with that more playing time. So congrats to him. Uh, going back to the Netherlands, we want to let you guys know that Haji Wright started and played 90 minutes in, uh, who was it? VVV Venlo's uh, two one win over FC 20. So uh, yeah, good, good performance from Haji. Um, seems to be taken pretty well over in the Netherlands just needs to, uh, you know, get on the score sheet a little bit more, I think. Uh, but still not not bad getting minutes. And, yeah, this team's doing pretty well. Now, uh, going back to Germany, I want to let you guys know that Roberto Hadigan uh, had two assists for Nuremberg's U19s over the weekend um, in their game. So, you know, good to see for, for Roberto. Uh, Nuremberg's U19s actually play a league down than most of the other U U19 teams. So, um yeah, you know, it is what it is, but Roberto is, you know, making the most of his opportunities. So uh, good to see. And uh, Quincy Butler, uh, staying in Germany, Quincy Butler uh, started and played 90 minutes for uh, Hoffenheim's U19s and also scored a goal for them in their uh, impressive 6-0 win. So congrats to him. Um, again, staying in Germany, we want to let you guys know that Maxi Dietz, a player who was on the USU 17s, uh, started and played 90 minutes and then also scored a goal. Uh, for Freiburg's U19s, and that was in their 5-1 win. So, uh, you know, a couple of young yas getting on the score sheet over in Germany. So that's always good to see. And uh, finally, we want to let you know that Eric Palmer-Brown uh, started and played 90 minutes uh, yet again in a 0-0 draw for Austria Vine. So another player looks like he's kind of broken into that starting lineup over in Austria. Um, Austria Vine, I, I think, sit in seventh. Um so, you know, they got some work to do to get back up in the table. And um, Jesse Marsh is making it hard for them. Uh, you know, Salzburg sit right now um, in first by 
a lot of points because uh, they haven't lost the league game yet. So, um, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and comment down below. And also uh, check out our Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, we've been very active on Instagram. Um, definitely, you know, t check out our account. We post each weekend, uh, you know, what all of our yas do, whether they, you know, score, assist, um, you know, what rumored moves are potentially taking place. Uh, so definitely, you know, keep an eye out on that. And uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't uh, probably not the best weekend for, for our yas. You know, there was some, some uh, players who we thought were going to play, start, play more minutes and unfortunately didn't. Um, so, you know, it's always good to see, uh, you know, get back into the swing of things after an international break. But uh, here's to hoping, you know, uh, next week's a little bit better. So uh, with that being said, um, hey, there's only one thing left to say, and that would be one way, one day, excuse me, we will win the World 